Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. The Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP, is very important in the real world, and most likely we use it all the time. DHCP servers are responsible for dynamically assigning IP addresses and subnet masks to hosts that are configured to have their IP addresses assigned automatically. So we probably use DHCP at home. If we've got a little router at home, we connect a device to it and our computer that's connected to our router is assigned an IP address automatically. If we didn't have DHCP, we would have to manually assign an IP address to every single computer. And then we'd also have to keep track of what IP addresses we assigned already so that we didn't have IP address conflicts. And if you have IP address conflicts, you're going to have communication problems on your network. So not only can DHCP servers set the IP address and subnet mask, they can also set the default gateway on a host, DNS servers, Win servers, domain names, and there's a lot of other options that DHCP servers can set. And we can actually use uh, Cisco routers for DHCP servers. Uh, in the real world, we're probably not going to do that because we're going to use a real DHCP server so that we can have more options that we can set on our hosts. But let's take a look at a uh, computer real quick. Here's just a Windows 7 machine. I'm going to take a look at one of the network connections. And I'm going to go to IP version 4. Go to properties. And if this was set to obtain an IP address automatically, then it would try to get its IP address from a DHCP server. And we'll see that exact process here in a second. And also notice there are DNS servers here. We could have that set to obtain DNS servers automatically as well, and then it would get the DNS servers, the preferred and the alternate, from the DHCP server, as well as the default gateway, assuming the DHCP server was configured to hand out that information. Now, on a DHCP server, an administrator will actually set a pool of IPs that can be handed out to the hosts. So it just doesn't randomly pick pick IP addresses to give to your DHCP clients. We actually set that up and we can even reserve IPs that are maybe part of a pool that say, hey, don't use these IPs because we've got these statically assigned to other hosts. For example, we may say, uh, you know, we may be using the class C address, and we'll talk about class C in a second, of 192.168.6. anything. So we're using that, those IP addresses in our subnet, and we say, okay, the DHCP server can hand out 192.168.6.100 through 192.168.6.150. All the other IP addresses in that subnet, we may be used statically assigning to hosts. And IP addresses are leased to the host for a specific period of time that's set on the DHCP server. And the host will occasionally renew this lease so that it can keep the same IP address. That's why if your host stays up and it's a DHCP client, it will most likely keep its same IP address for a long time. But if you shut it down for a period of time, then boot it back up, it might actually get a different IP address from the DHCP server. Now it is possible to have an IP address conflict from a DHCP server where it hands out an IP address that's already in use. This can happen if an administrator accidentally statically assigns an IP address to a host that is part of the DHCP pool that is configured on the DHCP server. DHCP servers try to prevent this by actually pinging the IP address before it hands it out. So that's one way a DHCP server tries to prevent it. A host can try to prevent this actually by using what's called a gratuitous ARP. And basically it sends an ARP out for the IP address that it's supposed to configure itself with. And if another host responds with its MAC address, then it knows, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't use this IP address because it's already in use. If a conflict does occur, then the IP address will not be assigned to a host until the administrator resolves the conflict by hand. So that's important to remember. 
Now, in the real world, DHCP servers react differently, but uh, for the test, just know that administrators have to resolve a conflict by hand. Now, let's look at the DHCP process, exactly how it works. So let's say we boot up our Windows 7 machine, for example, that's configured to have its IP address assigned automatically. What it does is it broadcasts a DHCP discover message. And this is the DHCP discover message on UDP port 67. So DHCP is going to use UDP. The broadcast is sent to FFFFF, which is the MAC address or the, the layer 2 broadcast address, as well as 255.255.255.255, which is the all hosts broadcast. And the reason it can't use the broadcast address of the subnet is because it doesn't have an IP address yet. So that's why it uses 255.255.255.255. Then since it's a broadcast, if you've got a DHCP server on that subnet, then the DHCP server will receive that broadcast and will send a unicast DHCP offer. So this is a DHCP offer, and unicast means it sends it directly to the host using the source MAC address from the frame of the broadcast that was sent by the host because it doesn't have an IP address yet. But we're on the same subnet, so that really doesn't matter. And this is also why a DHCP server needs to be on a subnet in order to listen to the broadcast, which is also part of the same broadcast domain. And when we go to configure DHCP servers, uh, we'll talk about what happens when you have a DHCP server in a, another subnet, and basically how to forward that DHCP request. So this DHCP offer is sent back to the host, back to our Windows 7 machine. Then the host broadcasts back to the DHCP server. It has to broadcast back again because it still doesn't have an IP address. A DHCP request message asking for the offered IP and any other parameters like uh, default gateway, DNS servers, things like that. The DHCP server then sends a unicast DHCP acknowledgement back to the host saying, here's the information, go ahead and configure yourself. And it makes a note on the DHCP server that that address has been leased out, specifies how long the lease is good for, so that if that lease does expire, then it can hand that IP address out to another host. One thing also to note is uh, boot P. It's different from a different protocol than DHCP, but real quick I want to talk about it. It's like DHCP because boot P assigns IP addresses, but MAC addresses must be manually entered into what's called a boot P table before it will assign the IP address. So this is normally just used when we're actually deploying operating systems because boot P can send an operating system that a host can boot from, and DHCP can't do that. 